Hello, True Crime Stories family. Welcome back. The detectives found Maddie's clothes in Stern's bedroom when they searched Jennifer's condo for evidence. This is undoubtedly a sensitive story that we will cover with the utmost care and compassion when reporting on this story. Did Jennifer ever go inside of Stern's bedroom? Did Jennifer notice Maddie's clothes in Stern's bedroom? How did Maddie's clothes end up in Stern's bedroom? Did Stern's keep some of Maddie's clothes in his bedroom? Did Stern's buy clothes for Maddie to keep in his bedroom? Was he dressing little Maddie up? The question of whether Maddie's mother noticed her daughter's clothes in Stern's bedroom is significant because it could potentially provide a crucial clue in the investigation. If Maddie's mother saw her daughter's clothes in Stern's bedroom, it would indicate that Maddie had been in Stern's company and Jennifer knew what was going on. The affidavit says, as your affiant was reviewing the pictures and videos, I was observing several different pieces of clothing to include patterned underwear, shirts, blankets, and sheets. Simultaneously, detectives of the Orange County Sheriff's Office were executing a search warrant at Stern's home address. At the same time, investigators found the pictures and videos of Maddie and Stern's phone. The detectives were already at Jennifer's condo searching for evidence. This address is also where the victim and her mother live. Some people say Stearns lived with Jennifer and Maddie, and some people say he didn't live there. He was just coming over. According to these court documents, he lived there with Maddie and her mother. The detectives searching the residence were contacted and confirmed they found the same distinctive clothing, both in Stearns' room and the victim's room. This information indicates that in some of the pictures and videos Stearns took of little Maddie, there was a pattern of her being dressed in a t-shirt and panties. What happened to Stern's bed sheets and blankets? The detective said they found Maddie's clothes, but they didn't mention finding Stern's bed sheets or blankets. Did he throw those items out? Or did he take them somewhere else? Does Jennifer know where they are? Did Stern's and Jennifer hide critical evidence before reporting Maddie missing? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Jennifer, Maddie, and Stearns each had their own separate bedrooms. The condo they stayed at in Kissimmee, Florida is two levels with four bedrooms and three bathrooms. The owner of the condo is Juan G. Soto. We believe this is a family member of Jennifer. If you know how Juan is related to Jennifer, please let us know in the comment section or send us an email. We got pictures from Zillow.com. This is the front door. When you walk in, there is a small living room and dining room. This is the kitchen. This is one of their bedrooms, although it's a four-bedroom, three-bathroom condo. Zillow only had pictures for one of the bedrooms and two of the bathrooms. We couldn't find pictures of the condo anywhere else.
Stearns did not show up to his first court date. Will he show up to his trial or will he refuse to attend? Let us know what you think. Madeline Soto was found dead in a wooded area in St. Cloud. Stephen Stearns has not been charged in her death, but will stand trial in May for dozens of child sex charges. Channel 9's Daryl Matthews has covered every development in this story. And Daryl, Stearns is due back in court next month. Yeah, Martha, April 2nd, to be exact, will be his arraignment date, April 24th, pre-trial, and the trial May 13th. And now, the state attorney's office tells me that those are set arraignment dates unless they're waived. And in this case, Stearns did waive that date, and those were the next court dates picked by the court system. He's sitting in the jail cell right now, and if convicted of child sex crimes he's accused of, Stephen Stearns could spend the rest of his life in prison regardless of what happens in the investigation into the death of 13-year-old Madeline Soto. I don't think this case is going to go, and if the murder charges are added, uh, it, you're going to be a year and a half, two years away before this case comes to trial. Stephen Stearns, the prime suspect in the disappearance of Madeline Soto, is the boyfriend of Soto's mother. He was the last person seen with a 13-year-old. In May, he'll stand trial not for her disappearance, but rather dozens of sex crimes. If the defense is not ready for trial, which I don't think they will be, uh, at that trial date, they're going to move to continue to give them more time to examine the evidence. So far, investigators have examined enough for the state's attorney's office to charge Stearns with 60 counts of sexual battery on a child under 12 and lewd or lascivious molestation. Stearns has not been charged in Maddie's death as law enforcement continues to investigate and has yet to charge anyone. They're waiting for all of the evidence to come in so they can carefully look at it, analyze it and make an informed decision as to the murder charge. Now, former Chief Judge Belvin Perry presided over the Casey Anthony case. He says right now he's commending law enforcement for taking their time to go through evidence and DNA to find out how Maddie died, taking out anyone who's not involved in her murder and holding the person responsible without making any mistakes. Stearns waived his next court dates, so it's a big chance he won't make an appearance and show his face. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.